All living things, including humans, emit a type of light that is not easily detectable. This light is called biophotons, which are particles of light known as photons spontaneously emitted by living tissues. Bioluminescence, which is the light emitted by fireflies, jellyfish, and a few other creatures, and chemiluminescence, the light emitted by a chemical reaction in living things, are not the same as biophoton emission. While bioluminescence and chemiluminescence can be seen by the eye, biophotons cannot. Biophotons are emitted when electrons within an organism become energized or excited, and they can be useful for detecting and diagnosing health issues as well as indicating what is happening within the organism. Biophotons are so faint that they are what is known as ultra-weak emissions of light in scientific literature. There is compelling evidence to suggest that biophotons play a fundamental role in our existence. When the emissions of biophotons by our bodies is disrupted, it often indicates a serious illness. For instance, changes in biophoton emission rates are now recognized as the earliest possible sign of cancer. Biophotons were first discovered in plants by the renowned scientist Professor Alexander Gurvich, who was studying the growth of onion roots when he demonstrated their existence, though he did not refer to them as biophotons at the time. In the following years, most studies on biophotons used biological detectors that measured a specific type of light in the medium ultraviolet range, which was originally called mitogenetic radiation. Although some scholars criticized these detectors, the most extraordinary early results they produced were accurate and have since been reliably verified using novel detection methods. Gurvich studied how cells divide and believed that something triggered this process. He didn't think this trigger was chemical, but instead that the organism as a whole used non-chemical signals to start cell division for its embryonic cells. Not only that, apparently such signals could transfer information that were capable of either healing or killing the cells. By changing the glass and quartz plates during his experiments, he quickly realized that emitting photons in the ultraviolet range were the signals at play. He named these signals mitogenic rays, which was later replaced by the term biophotons. He believed that the whole organism must coordinate the emission of ultraviolet photons, which he attributed to its morphogenetic field. He was a true visionary to come up with this idea, because there wasn't any physics works to explain how such a field might work at that time. It was only after his death when physicists published a paper that introduced the concept of coherence which helped explain Gurvich's field theory. He was very innovative and was the first person to suggest the existence of collective states and cooperative phenomena within organisms, but which he called states of mutual alignment and orientation of molecules. Gurvich proposed that there was an organized redistribution of energy within the organism on a large scale, which triggered chain reactions of signal propagation. This spatial organization of the whole organism was more important than individual atoms and molecules, proving the existence of long-range order in biological fields. Biophoton study played a major role in shaping this larger picture but in-depth research was conducted by Inushin and Grishenka in the Soviet Union. They discovered a plasmatic state within living organisms that differed from inorganic plasma, being a cold plasma possessing a high degree of order. To put it simply, bioplasma is a concept that suggests the existence of a plasmatic state within living organisms, which emits biophotons as one of its manifestations. Inushin proposed the existence of a kind of bioplasma body, a plasmatic double that accompanies the physical body. He suggested that living systems are based on excitation-de-excitation -de dynamics, and bioplasma is a cold plasma created by the polarization of biological semiconductors. The problem with Inushin's work is that most of it was done for Soviet secret services that were researching various anomalous psi phenomena and is smoldering beneath the smoke of secrecy. However, certain psi phenomena could have a direct connection to the polarization of organic semiconductors as described by him. 
One of them is the emergence of a unique state of matter that has both matter-like and light-like properties, and that can undergo strong interactions with each other, leading to the formation of a state of liquid light. Liquid light combines a superfluid with a Bose-Einstein condensate, described as the fifth state of matter. As a fluid, such light can flow around objects and corners, so one can see what's hidden behind them. Normally observed at extremely low temperatures, this study achieved the same state at room temperature, creating a hybrid of light matter. In this state, turbulence is suppressed around obstacles and it behaves as a macro-quantum object combining attributes of liquids, solids, and gases. It's speculated that this state may correspond to some components of superfluid states of dark matter. So, each polarization of semiconductors described by Inutian might allow living matter to create exotic quantum states on a macro level and at room temperatures. The existence of liquid light in living matter has not been experimentally proven yet, but it requires the presence of an electron-hole plasma in semiconductors as one of the crucial elements for its creation. Such plasma's existence has already been empirically verified by Dr. Alexander Boychenka and published in this paper. In his following paper, he published results of his further experiments. During his research of biophotons and plants, something very intriguing was discovered. He wrote, quote, It was possible to identify in plants a highly organized variable substance formed from different grade electrically charged particles that collectively interact with each other and reflect the physiological state of plants as holistically organized systems. By its physical properties, this substance was very similar to the plasma of a gas discharge or semiconductors, and proved to be extremely sensitive to environmental factors, especially to the action of electric or magnetic fields. And its changes occurred long before this action manifested itself at the anatomical and morphological level of plant organization, and regardless of whether such an action was exerted for the whole organism or part of it. End of quote. Such sensitivity to environmental factors is a very important finding. His research was specifically focused on electromagnetic field pollution and its negative influence on plants. But there is more to it. The long-term studies of biophotons and various species and varieties of plants have revealed significant changes in the brightness of the glow of plants' biostructures depending on the time of year. It is established that the maximum intensity of biophotons of various plants relates to the spring-summer period, and its decline is at least in the autumn-winter period. In addition, a noticeable change in the intensity of biophoton radiation was detected during the day. Alexander Boychenka notes in his paper that the results of his work on bioplasma may radically differ from those obtained for the same species and varieties of plants at other times of the year and even of the day. In fact, a similar seasonal effect was confirmed in this peer-reviewed study of human biophotons. They also found the seasonal dependency of biophoton emission rates from human hands that was similar to plants, with its lowest in autumn. This echoes the results of many years of research into changes in the rate of chemical and biochemical reactions carried out by Dr. Simon Schnull and other researchers. Many experiments have shown that during calm sun years, there is an influence on speed of various reactions in the laboratory experiments, and that it is much higher during active sun years, and this variation is consistent with the lunar phases. This is quite surprising since from the standpoint of current scientific knowledge, changes in the relative position of the Earth, Moon, and Sun do not affect processes of chemical reactions. Do we observe the participation of some intermediaries in the influence of the cosmos on such processes in complex systems? Freeman Cope proposed why it might happen in the paper we discussed before. Quote, Experimental evidence suggests that diffuse superconductive plasma may reach the Earth from the Sun, resulting in diurnal and seasonal fluctuations in rates of antigen-antibody reactions, as well as in rates of precipitation and crystallization of solids from solutions." End of quote. 
It was recently proposed that the important component of such superconductive plasmas from the Sun is flux of slow neutrinos, and some modern-day researchers come forward with an idea that this is the agent causing such seasonal fluctuations and other anomalous phenomena. Alexander Parkhomov was the one who reported in numerous papers and in his book that neutrino is not just an elusive substance dissolved in an infinite universe, it is also an important carrier of the links between the biosphere and the cosmos. It was his idea that the agent carrying space influences to Earth objects may be flows of slow neutrinos, one of the components of dark matter. He argues that the involvement of neutrino in the cosmic terrestrial links, along with other agents, might explain the cyclical nature of solar activity, lunar rhythms and biological processes, the dependence of a number of terrestrial processes on the location of planets, and galactic rhythms and biosphere processes, the conclusions other researchers also come up with. For instance, Professor Xu Wenzhou from the Department of Physics, Hwasong University. In this article, he reported the abnormal physical phenomena observed in experiments when the Sun, Moon, and Earth are in an approximately straight line. His research group held numerous observations of anomalies of physical character. These include an unusual force of horizontal oscillation, strange changes in the pattern of grain sequence in crystals, changes in wavelength of emission spectral of atoms or molecules, and changes in the rate of speed of atomic clocks. No mysticism is involved here. This effect might occur due to the gravitational lensing and intensification of the flux of slow or relict neutrinos from space by celestial bodies. The fourth chapter of Alexander Parkhomov's book, entitled Where Physics is Powerless, discusses his work on psi phenomena as an extension of his main experimental research on neutrinos. There is indirect evidence that he was involved in the Soviet psychic spy programs as well, and that it was this work that gave him the tools needed to provide a significant part of the puzzle. Through experiments, he established the fact that cosmic rhythms influence detectors sensitive to extrasensory effects as well. His suggestion then was that the carriers of cosmic Earth connections, including weakly interacting particles like neutrinos, are involved in such phenomena. At that time, he was interested in dowsing and how it might work, and came up with an idea that when slow neutrinos interact with matter, it's like light passing through a clear material. Mostly no absorption, but at different interfaces, like density changes, refraction, reflection, and scattering happen. This allows detecting underground objects illuminated by ultra-low energy neutrinos, akin to reflected light. Another indication of the validity of his hypothesis is that the effectiveness of dowsing is also variable, correlating with the same rhythms characteristic of seasonal superconductive plasma and neutrino flux changes that might well be a source of particle material needed for this phenomena. It's no surprise then that such seasonal properties correlate with biophoton emission and general manifestation of effects that are commonly referred to as parapsychological. Some researchers reported that an individual's extrasensorial abilities are often influenced by various factors, such as their environment, time of year, and time of day. This indicates that ESP is not necessarily paranormal per se, but rather an inherent characteristic of living organisms that is interconnected with natural systems, cosmic Earth bonds, and influenced by them. This is what Professor Vladimir Solnikov wrote in his work, quote, Our work on the study of a man and his relationship with the environment give us the right to conclude about the geometric similarity of plasma formations and physical fields of a man. Therefore, in certain conditions, a person can act as an intermediary and sometimes as a generator of plasma formations. End of quote. Despite being viewed as highly speculative and often ignored by academia, bioplasma and related phenomena gathered enough experimental and theoretical scientific data to be considered an essential part of life. Its functions encompass exploring exotic effects and looking into life's profound mysteries across time. 
Hence, bioplasma and bioelectricity concepts should be researched together and take their rightful place in the current and future scientific worldview. <laughs>